Hi everybody, this is Dr. Schultz. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to apply a skill called using proportional reasoning. Um, as I go through in this video, I would like you to follow along in the, uh, the packet that you picked up today, and um, you'll find an example in there and some extra practice problems to work on when I'm done. So I'm going to read from the top. Um, it says, sometimes you may be given a mathematical function that relates one quantity to several others. You may be asked to predict how the one quantity will change as a proportion if the others are changed by specific factors. What may make this challenging is if no numbers are provided for the actual values of any of these quantities. Solving this type of problem requires the use of a skill called proportional reasoning. Okay, and there's an example underneath here, and you'll probably recognize this example from our last test. Uh, this example involves Newton's second law. And I'll read it. It says, when a net force F pushes an object of mass M, the object undergoes an acceleration A. If instead only one half of the force is used on a mass that is four times greater than the original, what new acceleration will result? Express this in terms of the original acceleration, A, with a subscript of zero. So when you first read this, this actually seems pretty scary. Um, one thing that's scary is it's, it's telling you that a lot of things are changing. The force is changing, and the mass is changing. Something else that might be scary is the fact that they never really tell you exactly what the force is or what the mass is, but you still have to make some type of quantitative prediction. And, um, and that's a skill, all right? So I'm going to show you two different ways of approaching this. Um, the first method is going to be, I think, the simpler method. And um, if you have a simple relationship um, or a simple law of physics, this is probably the easiest way to do it. So let's take a look at it. Um, the first step that you're going to want to do is to uh, basically identify the formula for the variable of interest. And uh, in this case, this is Newton's second law. Um, you need to know that, and you would be, need to be able to identify that equation, and you might need to rearrange it too, so that you're solving for the variable of interest. All right, in this case, the variable of interest is acceleration, so acceleration is going to be written on the left side of the equation, and that's equal to net force divided by mass. Okay. Now, in step two, you're going to look at that relationship and you're going to identify any direct proportion that exists. Um, in this case, acceleration is directly proportional to net force. And we can see that, I'm going to go off the script here, <laughs> you can see that because acceleration and net force, um, well, net force is on top of the fraction, right? So increasing F net makes this fraction bigger, that makes acceleration bigger. So your direct proportion exists between acceleration and net force. So in this case, the acceleration is directly proportional to the net force, so applying only half of the force should cause the accel acceleration to become half as much. And we want to remember that. I'm going to write down a one-half here. Okay, so that's just using the logic of a direct proportion. Uh, the next step is to identify any inverse proportion that is present, okay? And in this case, the acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. And I hope you can see that because mass is in the denominator. And so the inverse proportion happens because as mass gets bigger, the fraction becomes smaller and the acceleration becomes smaller. Now, in this case, if you have quadruple the mass, meaning four times as much, having a denominator which is four times bigger will make the whole fraction one-fourth as big. Okay? And so the effect of quadrupling the mass is to make the mass, is to make the acceleration one-fourth as much. The last step in this method is to simply say, now let's put those two factors together. So if I have half as much acceleration coming from the direct proportion, and one-fourth as much acceleration from the inverse proportion, I'm going to have one-eighth as much overall. In other words, you multiply those factors. 
And so the answer to this question would be that the new acceleration is only going to be one-eighth as much as the original. Okay? Um, you could also write that by saying a is equal to one-eighth times a, a with the zero. Okay. Um, by the way, this zero is often used in, in physics, so you've noticed it on your green sheets. The zero always refers to an initial quantity. In this case, it's the initial acceleration. So the new acceleration is a, the, it, that's equal to one-eighth of the original. Okay, and hopefully that is, uh, doesn't sound too crazy to you. <laughs> uh, let's, let me show you a different way of approaching this exact same problem. We're gonna, it's it's uh, slightly more mathematical. However, the second method is good when you have relationships that are more complicated, or they involve several parts, and we're going to be seeing those. We've already seen some with projectiles. So step one is going to be um, the same as before. Um, I guess I included the initial here. I didn't do that before, but uh, that's fine. So again, this is Newton's second law. And now what we're going to do is we're going to write A for the new acceleration, and that's going to be equal to F net divided by M. But now we're going to actually put the change factors in front of those quantities. So again, I'm using the same problem that we, that we read off on the other page. And so if I apply half as much force, I'm going to write one-half F net. And if I have quadrupled the mass, I'm going to write 4M. So I'm putting those factors directly into the formula. And I'm also keeping the symbols for F net and for mass. Now, the next step is, is crucial. I'll read it. Get the change factors out in front of the original formula using the laws of algebra. If any constants are present in the original formula, do not factor them out and this doesn't really apply in this particular example because there aren't any constants, but so what we'll do in this example is we're going to take the one-fourth, I'm sorry, the one-half and the four and we need to basically bring them out in front and so we get one-half and we have to divide by four. And then the F net and the mass kind of are still a quotient, right? It's still F net divided by mass, so I'm simply going to write that over here. So you see what I'm doing is I'm taking the change factors and put, bringing them out. I'm remembering to divide by the 4. And then I'm really ending up with the original formula here again. Um, if my formula had a constant in it, let's say that there was a 1 half in the original formula, I would still want to leave that 1 half in this formula, and I wouldn't want to take it out. So keep that in mind for some of the practice examples that are coming up. Uh, the rest of this is just multiplying 1 half, I'm sorry, dividing 1 half by 4. That gives you 1 eighth. And, of course, 1 eighth times F net over M uh, is really just saying you have 1 eighth of the original acceleration. So this F net over M is just the original acceleration. And um, another way to say that would be to say, since A is equal to 1 eighth of the original, then you could actually divide A original on both sides. You could say, well, the new acceleration divided by the original is equal to one-eighth. It's just a different way of saying it. So if you really wanted numbers, <laughs> if my original acceleration was equal to 16 meters per second squared, if I made these changes that I described, my new acceleration would be equal to one-eighth, or two meters per second squared. And so that's actually a really big change um, in the acceleration. Uh, because I'm, I'm reducing force and I'm increasing mass at the same time. Now, guys, be careful because sometimes, sometimes the mass will actually, instead of increasing, the mass might decrease. And so instead of doing 4m, this might be 1 fourth m. And then you have to just be careful about stuff. So, for example, if this was 1 fourth, you would then in this step have to do 1 half divided by 1 fourth, right? So this is a, it's kind of a different case. different case. But please know your fractions, please know your algebra, and know that in order to, to simplify that, that the best way to do it is to multiply both the top and the bottom by 4. And that basically kind of kills off everything down there, and that leaves you with 4 halves divided by 1, that's equal to 2. 
So that's not applying to these, these numbers here, but I'm just saying that sometimes you'll have a different mass and you might have to divide by a fraction. And I expect that you'll be able to do that correctly. Okay, so that's basically the technique. Um, both, both methods, one and two, give the same answer. You should be able to do both. I'm going to have you guys go and do some of the examples now that follow. They're going to start off easier and they're going to get more challenging. Um, as you do the examples, you can then go and check your work by looking at the key that's posted on today's um, Google Classroom post, and you can kind of help each other as, as needed. But I think I've given you everything that you need here in terms of methods for figuring out these types of problems, okay? So um, do some practice, and um, if you really get stuck on something, make a note and bring a question, and we can talk about it in our next class. All right, have fun.